That's a great question. You know, I get asked that question all the time. You know, what is the future of healthcare? And, you know, it'd be easy to answer that question in a very anti simplistic way because, of course, the future of healthcare is far from simple. I could say that the future of healthcare is the impact of the metaverse, anticipatory AI connection architecture, hyper-consumerization, new economic models, new clinical models, the decentralization of healthcare, the impact of prevention over intervention, mobile technologies, wearable technologies, and the list goes on and on. And of course, that's the problem, right? When we're trying to understand healthcare, I think we tend to really uh, just become overwhelmed. It's very easy for us to do that because we really don't know what should we be focusing on as leaders? What, what do we really need to know in order to run great organizations and to lead great teams? So when I answer that question, I, I think another way to look at that question might be, um, is the future of healthcare good or is the future of healthcare bad? I think every leader really wants to know that, the answer to that question. And the answer of course is, Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. It's great for leaders that understand the changes in a very practical way that react to those changes. Whereas I think it's very, very um, bad for organizations and organizational leaders that are really doubling down to a legacy philosophy about the future of healthcare. In fact, when things get weird and, and things change in the healthcare marketplace, Many leaders double down in bureaucracy and sameness. Because when you think about the future of healthcare, I think there's really one word that describes it best, and that's differentness. I think that's a word. And we can't fix differentness with sameness. But we do that, right? We assume that we can address differentness, the future of healthcare, by doubling down to sameness. And another word for sameness really is legacy. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of things that we have within our legacy toolbox. It's very relevant that, of course, we need to continue to improve upon and deploy. But in a time of chaotic change, uh, the, the speed and the size and the nature of change itself has changed in a very big way. And today, I'd like to answer some of these questions to help us get an answer as to what do we do about it? Because ultimately, that's the real question, what do we do about these changes? So I think the future of healthcare is great for organizational leaders, that's great. The best way to look at the future of healthcare is that it does require new skills and new philosophies and new ideas in order to be relevant. I think that there is absolutely organizational winners and organizational losers. There are leaders that are going to win at this, and there are losers in this, in this game. Um, and that's sad, right? Because um, it's understandable. We know what the future of healthcare is. We actually know it in a pretty clear way. We even have a pretty good sense about the trajectory of change going out to at least the next five years about when emerging technologies will be adopted, when new economic models and value models will be adopted, what are the innovation pipelines looking like in terms of when they will deploy, and, and so on. So I think the, the real winners are the ones that are committed to understanding the change. Those leaders that are willing to understand the change and be open to the idea that they themselves and their organization needs to change, those are the winners. Again, the losers, and I may be sounding redundant here, are those organizations and those leaders that are ignoring, literally in a contemptuous way, ignoring the change and just saying, hey, look, we've done really good so far with this model that's inside of our red brick building, and we anticipate that we're gonna do good if we just continue to do what we've done historically. And of course, if the ecosystem wasn't changing and we lived in a vacuum, that would be a pretty good philosophy and a pretty good business strategy. But it's not. Change is happening in such a big way that leaders need to make chaotic innovation and future casting part of their organizational strategy. 
In fact, another very important point I'd like to make is that the best organizational leaders are doing strategic cycle management every six months. In other words, they're dusting off their strategy, they're putting together their executive and core teams, they're getting representation across their enterprise, they're getting external uh, representation about emerging trends, and they're making decisions about what they need to do to update their strategy very frequently. Six months or 12 months are the absolute longest we should wait to be able to update our overarching enterprise strategy and then of course the downstream derivative strategies uh, from our overarching strategy. It's just what we have to do today because of the way in which things are changing. All right, so chaotic innovation, that's a great question. Well, you know, when you think about the changes in healthcare, this is something you may want to keep in mind. You know, over the last 20 or 30 years, we had what I call symmetrical innovation. You know, back in the symmetrical innovation days, which, you know, I've been in healthcare for four decades, and I saw it where, you know, things weren't moving super fast. It seemed like it maybe at the time, uh, but the nature of the speed was pretty slow. And during symmetrical innovation, the size of innovations were pretty small, and mainly because we didn't have this really big toolbox of enabling technologies uh, to draw upon. We didn't have connection options. So early on in the spectrum or the trajectory of change of innovation, we had, we had um, symmetrical innovation that was very incremental. And then over the last 10 years, gosh, you can't pick up a journal, you can't read an article without somebody talking about disruptive innovation. And uh, as my 16-year-old daughter would say, uh, you know, disruptive innovation was the good old days, and it was so 2020, right? Uh, disruptive innovation basically is a thing, right, where all of a sudden things were changing pretty quick in healthcare, and we've all witnessed that over the last 10 years. Um, and what is, how do you describe disruptive innovation? Well, it's really the size and the speed of change that really um, is the hallmark of what it means to describe uh, disruptive innovation. And of course, it's still an issue. Things are sped up like unbelievable, and the size of this change is just really huge. Well, now we've transitioned into chaotic innovation in 2022 and beyond. And chaotic innovation has two really interesting DNA components. One is it's amorphous, meaning that the nature of what it is is less clear uh, than it used to be. And as a result of that, it's a little, it requires a little more thoughtfulness and we have to pay closer attention to all of these different variables to make sure that we understand where it's coming from. So it's amorphous in nature. It's not in form always. The biggest problem is it's asymmetrical, meaning that it's coming from nowhere. In fact, if you Google the term asymmetrical warfare, you'll see examples like the 9-11 attacks where it kind of came from nowhere. Uh, and, and also these asymmetrical attacks to our our healthcare industry, and I call them attacks, really they're not necessarily attacks because oftentimes these new innovations, these chaotic innovations are additive to the way in which we deliver on the promise of improved quality of patient care. So it's not like these are bad uh, enterprises, these are organizations that want to deliver better experiences, better care, better safety, better alternatives, better clinical models, better, better, better. Chaotic innovators are in the betterment business and they're using enabling technologies and connection architecture and hyper-consumerism to fuel their future. So I think that to understand chaotic innovation, we need to realize that we have to have future casting teams. And we really have to pay attention right now more than ever because these things are amorphous and they're coming at us from nowhere. So, you know, what does that mean from a practical perspective? It means that in the process of doing our shorter strategic life cycles, we have to bring in new data sets about the impact of these new emerging technologies, about new models that are coming out, how we can respond to them. And really, we have to be better innovators. We have to speed up our innovation activities. Most organizations today have centers for innovations. Um, unfortunately, oftentimes these centers are operating on the, you know, the symmetrical innovation model from 20 years ago. A few better ones are working on a disruptive model, but very few are really working from a chaotic innovation model. And that's really what's required, required I think, to make this work.